Hi guys and welcome to A Dark Soul, an empath guide to your dark feelings. Today we're going to talk about how to socialize a fearful dark. So stay tuned and have fun. Alright, so first we have to settle on what the dog is afraid of. So are we talking about a dog who is afraid of people or are the dogs or things, objects or sounds or other things like smells and things like that? We can't really socialize with smells or sounds or stuff like that because socialization would mean that the dog interacts and act social with whatever he is afraid of and an object is not really something that would interact back right so what we can do with things is we can get the dog used to them but when we are talking about socialization most of the time we have in mind that our dog becomes this very friendly open-minded individual who is just happy with every person every dog and can really deal with every other being right and spoiler alert this might not be possible for every dog it always depends on how extreme the fear is and why the dog is afraid in the first place right so those are two things that really determine how fast or how far we can go or we can get with our dog but there are also a lot of other components to this like if we have any underlying health issues or if the dog is in some way not feeling well not enough sleep or whatever then we have it a lot harder to work on socialization also there is a socialization window in puppyhood and that's a phase where our dogs can generalize other people or other dogs things like that so they learn five humans are friendly and nice to me and i like them so i'm expecting the sixth to be the same when we have an adult dog who never learned to generalize that we will always have a dog who tries to assess every situation and also assess every person freshly when they meet sometimes even on every single meeting so it is a lot harder to get a dog who missed that window to be social with other animals than a puppy so if we have a puppy and our puppy is not afraid at all it's super important that we let that puppy make a lot of positive experiences with different people different dogs so that the puppy also learns that those don't look always the same sometimes people wear funny things on their heads for example or sometimes they look extremely puffy because they are in winter clothes and they kind of move differently and things like that and it's the same thing for dogs so there are dogs who have different ear shapes or long fur or short fur or no fur <laughs> or they can have different sizes they can have no snouts they can have no tails they can have one leg less or whatever and all of this is okay so we have to watch out for overwhelming our dogs so 
we cannot let our puppy meet a gazillion people and dogs and things like that every day because it would be overwhelming but we should see that our puppy learns as many different things as possible without overwhelm and when we have an adult dog who is already afraid of let's say other dogs then we have to start completely different we have to start teaching the dog tactics that will help him in a situation where he meets other dogs it's the same for people so and only when the dog has learned such tactics and way out that he can use in situations where he gets uncomfortable only then we can start introducing dogs in a distance our dog feels still comfortable with and gradually decrease distance so what happens when we do it this way is that our dog will learn that he is in control of the situation because he can leave at any time with the strategy he has learned before also he doesn't get overwhelmed he has positive experiences because he feels good in the situations and he might even get curious about the other dog there are dogs who never start getting curious about other dogs and they will not learn to play with other dogs or things like that because they are just not interested in that and that's okay we have to be fine with that but what they can learn is that they are neutral to other dogs so they don't bark lunch and whatever at other dogs they just ignore them and that makes our lives a lot easier as well right if we have a dog who is just neutral to other dogs and other people we can really have a very relaxed life with that dog especially when that dog in the beginning barked and lunged and growled and whatever at every people every person every dog everything he was scared of and especially when it's a big dog and people get scared of the dog and they start yelling at the owner and we have trouble holding the dog and it hurts because whenever the dog lunges and the leash is only so long it crashes into our shoulder and it's very unpleasant so if we get to neutral that's fine for a lot of dog human teams but there are dogs who get curious and who can really learn to interact with other dogs and what they need is after having the distance and the strategies and things like that as soon as it's possible to have them in close contact with other dogs we need other dogs who are really well socialized who accept when another dog needs more space who won't chase after a fearful dog or at least has a great recall or is on leash who wouldn't get in our dog's face and be unfriendly or rude who is just patient with other dogs especially fearful dogs and who give our dog the time he needs to assess the situation assess the dog and find a way to feel comfortable interacting and yes finding such a dog is not always that easy we can use social media and we can always ask the dog owner to meet the dog first without our dog and when we meet with both dogs we can ask for distance in the beginning and then slowly decrease the distance and see how the fearful dog reacts 
and how the fearful dog is fine or not in the situation and can continue or not in the situation. And in the whole training process, until we get to really have our dog interact with another dog, we will see sometimes that our fearful dog feels more comfortable with a certain type of other dog. So sometimes it's a dog that looks a little like our fearful dog because most of the time dogs had little mates. So if they have positive experiences with other dogs, chances are good that it was with little mates and they looked a lot like themselves. Not always, but pretty often. So this can be the easiest way in. Of course, some dogs didn't have little mates because they were a single puppy and taken from the mother and whatever. But if they had, this can be a way in. Some dogs also like small dogs better than large dogs, sometimes the other way around. Sometimes dogs like a specific play style. Like my dog Sammy, he is a herding dog and he likes other herding dogs and terriers. He really likes terriers despite the fact that terriers play a little more roughly often. But he likes them because he had positive experiences with them. And sometimes people look at me funny when I tell them that my dog likes staffies and pitties and dogs like that. And he is this very fragile looking, <laughs> soft, very cute little fur ball. <laughs> it's just something they don't expect because in my country, staffies and pitties are listed as dangerous and very often dog owners who have other kind of dogs avoid them. And for Sammy, those are, in his opinion, easy to get along with. On the other hand, he has real issues with blonde labs because he had some difficult experiences with them and a blonde lab is really tricky for him. So he will act differently when I introduce him to different dogs and he will need more distance with trickier dogs. So whenever we see a blonde lab on the street, we have to get a little more distance in in the beginning and Sammy needs time to watch that dog first and just try to get a feeling for the other dog. See how he behaves and if that can be safe or not. On the other hand, with small dogs, he gets really frustrated when he can't get to them as fast as possible. So he is really impolite on one hand with small dogs and he doesn't see them as dangerous or potentially dangerous. So he doesn't take time to assess the situation. He doesn't take time to watch the dog. He would just run up to them and see what happens. <laughs> of course, I can't let him do that because he would bring himself in a situation he can't handle whenever the small dog is not completely safe or not completely sovereign and the situation would get out of hand. So both dogs would not be comfortable. So this is when we have to help our dogs. When we see them not being able to make a good decision, we have to help them a little bit or a lot, depending on the dog and the decision they are making. And when it comes to letting our dogs be off leash with another dog, 
we should be as sure as possible that this is gonna work that the other dog is gonna be friendly to our dog that our dog will be friendly to the other dog and that both will not be overwhelmed and when we see that the dogs get themselves in a situation they can't handle as well or they get tense or they play and they can't take breaks on their own we have to help them and that's also why we need to train strategies and tactics in the beginning so that such situations do not get out of hand but we can intervene in a friendly and social way with our dogs and that way just become a helper and not somebody who sucks the fun out of a situation right so to sum it up we need our dogs to learn strategies they can use whenever they meet another dog or a person we then have to find dogs who are really social who are really friendly and not pushy towards our dog where our dog can learn and where our dog can just make experiences and try himself out and always pick a distance our dog is still comfortable with and has time to assess the situation and the other individual for him all right and that way we can really get our dog from fearful to playful as fast as it gets that's it i would love for you to press the subscribe button or the plus in apple podcast and share the episode with anybody you know struggling with socializing their dog or even having a guilty conscience because their dog doesn't want to interact with other dogs or with people or anything like that because it's so important that we see our dogs as objectively as possible and not interpret something that isn't there so if our dog doesn't want to have contact with other dogs it's fine as long as his needs are taken care of and we are also happy with the situation nobody on the outside can tell us that this is wrong enjoy your time together enjoy your time socializing and we'll see each other next time bye